Look at me, Daddy's got a new pair of shoes. Yeah, that's your job going with. I've got nothing else to clever to come up with. Sorry. In any case, Green Zal's Blue Knight. Welcome back to Ratchet and Clank. Previously, we start our adventure on the Blarg Tactical Research Station on Nebula G34. We haven't found Turbid Drek yet, but we have found quite a bit of goodies, like finding the Totter and saving a scientist in order to get our newly acquired grind boots, which I'm demonstrating right now. As you saw in the description in the last episode, this helps you grind on rails wherever you find them, which can actually lead you to some pretty, pretty rewarding destinations. So we'll be using this a lot in the future. Today, we'll be exploring the rest of the tactical research station by sending Clank outside. The first instance that we'll be controlling somebody other than Ratchet in this game. And this isn't the last time that Clank gets to be controlled in the series. This happens quite a lot throughout the franchise. But in this first iteration of this uh, gameplay formula, I guess, there's not much to really cover. You move around with the control stick, and you punch left, not left and right, you punch with the square button like so. You can press square repeatedly so Clank can continuously punch like I'm doing right now. You can press X to jump and hold X again while the air to glide. And that's about it for Clank. Yeah, like I said, not much to cover at first, but yeah, it's the first game, what can you do? It's not like they were gonna craft a masterpiece when they were thinking this, I guess. And I just, as I just mentioned, we could glide with Clank, just like we could do with Ratchet. Let's take out all of this. So the reason we're sending Clank out here is because we could actually find another unique item for Ratchet to use. So that's why we're out here right now doing so. Also, it doesn't hurt to, hurt to get a lot of cash out hand, especially the 2,000 we had to spend from, uh, from, uh, Buy the grind boots for that scientist we saved. Jump down here. Also, Clank can ledge grab like I've been demonstrating. Pretty sure it offers the same way that you do it, Ratchet. So, not much of a difference in that department. Follow the trail of bolts like always. Because the trail of bolts always leads you on the right path. Like I said, that's key to, for the franchise, but it's actually very useful. Also, I can see a little spaceship off in the background. I'm pretty sure that's something I didn't mention that I was hoping I would earlier than I have right now, but if you look very closely, you can actually see other ships flying throughout the space. So it kind of gives you an idea that we're actually not alone on this adventure. There are other people that are living out their lives in the Solana Galaxy, which, by the way, is the name of the galaxy that we're Occupy right now. Actually, we're in. Okay, there's a gold bolt I saw right over there. We can't get to that gold bolt. As a matter of fact, we will be able to e get back. Valve, work, please. We will be able to. We will be able to get to that gold bolt for a long time. That's what I'm trying to say. Valve, brain, tug, please cooperate. I'm trying to make sense here. The viewer will understand me if you keep messing up. <laughs> Okay, in any case, we have just achieved a gadget bot. To, to command a gadget bot, hold out triangle and select wait, follow, attack, or enter. So I was kind of lying when I said that uh, that we just saw everything that Clank could do. This is more or less the main gimmick of controlling Clank in this game, and in future installments as well. So we hold down uh, left on the control stick. Pretty much operating the... Uh, Gacha bots, it's the same way that you do for a quick select, except you can't do like a quick change. Like I'm doing right now, I'm pressing triangle twice, but nothing's happening. So, like the message said, there are four commands we can do with these gacha bots. The second I'll demonstrate is enter. If you see a door like that nearby, chances are you'll have to enter a certain amount of gacha bots into said door to. Unlock whatever's in your way. The 
Yes. <laughs> like showing off there's a little victory. Yeah, let him have it. It's a small victory, so that sometimes that counts. <laughs> We found the Hydro Displacer. This gadget uses instant faucets and instant drains. Using it, you can drain and fill pools. Our sensors do not detect any on the space station. But I'm pretty sure we'll get to use it on our next destination. I'm back. So you are. And I found this. Hey, cool. It's a... Uh... uh, uh what is it? A hydro displacer. Great. I always wanted one of those. I guess. So we found ourselves another hydro. Uh, let's see. Do you have... uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, that much I know. Quick select menu in the pause screen. You could just hit that and assign whatever weapon or gadget you want onto the quick select screen. So you don't have to go back to the weapon or gadgets menu. I had to select it from there. It's pretty helpful, but you only have one weapon wheel to work with. So be sure to keep that in mind. So now that we're done with everything here on Nebula G34 for now, there's that one bolt we'll have to keep in mind for later. But like I said, we won't be able to get that for a long time. So let's just proceed ahead with our adventure and head to Planet Rilgar, Blackwater City. As we heard earlier in the game from Skid and his agent, this is where the hoverboard races are taking place, so we can finally knock those out. Welcome to Planet Rilgar, Blackwater City. This is one of the more memorable planets to be, not just because of the hoverboard races, but other things that we could uh, encounter in this uh, in this level, but I'll be sure to show that soon enough. Huh? Well, uh, first things first. Wow, that's really expensive. Uh, I didn't think it cost that much, but yeah, whatever. This is the buy glove. So the buy glove, basically, you can lay down. Uh, uh, mines in your vicinity and whichever and whenever enemies are trying to approach you Those mines will actually home in on them and will destroy them You can actually use this in combination with the totter to make a very effective uh, uh, Weapon combo like that so it does have its uses especially with the totter. That's what it does best in my opinion So first things first we're gonna head right I believe this will take us to the hoverboard station. Uh, but as you can see, we got a tank to deal with. Uh, wait, come to think of it. Uh, I'm just trying to check something a little bit. So since we've acquired a few items in our adventure, I'm going to use a more organized approach. When I was planning, I comprised a weapon set for each level we'll be using from this point on. The weapons I've chosen will be from my own experience, but this is completely objective. Everyone's going to favor some weapons more than others, so if you're playing along, this is all completely up to you. I also did this to prevent myself from going to the weapons and gadget screens if I need to equip something because that will interrupt the gameplay so much. Okay, so this is the weapon set that I decided to design for Planet Rilgar. Again, this is all based on my own experiences, so... Your experience of, on using these weapons might end up being a lot different from mine, but I play this game quite a lot in the past, so it's just all objective, that's what I'm trying to say. To deal with that tank, I could send in the Agent of Doom. One shot, or like two shots, I only see two Agents left. But still, that just still goes to show how powerful those little guys can be. Two ages so it's all it took to take down that big tank uh, let's keep going uh. so be sure to, to not fall in the water obviously because you will get eaten up by a sewer shark if that happens uh. well that crate and proceed on uh. get more of these uh more of these extra bots uh. Don't want to deal with, that's what these guys are. 
Actually, Bonk Glove might be useful in this scenario. So what am I doing? I can actually use the Mind Glove. And then... Well, I was gonna use the Totter, but that worked too, I guess. I'll just deal with you guys, because I've been lingering on you long enough. Get out of my face! Thank you very much. We can see behind those Extrema bots. It's the first instance of an Amiiboid. Not a Amiibo, people. It's an Amiiboid. Don't get your words mixed up. So as we see, those guys, if we hit them, they will continue to multiply into smaller Amiiboids. So be careful, especially around the big ones, because those can multiply a lot. If you... If you engage them in combat. And I mentioned a while back that uh, we're gonna see every now and then uh, more factions in Ratchet and Clank uh, as a, uh, I guess, a gimmick in this uh, in this game. Uh, and I mentioned that there's an early case in game that uh, this is the case. Uh, I think it was back on radio when I mentioned it. Uh, this is that level. At least to my memory, because this is where I happen to see those war factions happen a lot in Ratchet Clank. And what is that guy doing? He's stuck in place because he can't get around that uh, little spot. That just cost him his life. He's trying to lay out a lot of these spots before he uses a totter again. Well, it kind of worked out. The mines were kind of getting dispersed in a way, but it did take out all those extrema bots, so it did work. But you see how effective the Totter and Michael can be as a combination, uh, On their own, they're not that much of a use, but when put together, they can help clear out a lot of enemies. So I'm gonna use that again. Uh, to wipe out all these guys. Uh, before I hit that switch. Uh, now I'll call the switch, or press the switch. Uh, I, as you can see, the AB boys and Extremo boss are going to war against each other. So we can use that to our advantage as well in trying to Eliminate the crowd, and I gotta be more careful. Actually, should get on the offensive more. Leave me alone. I don't want to die. I actually died on Planet Railguard. My god, I have died so much as of late. And the checkpoint sent me all the way back to the beginning. What is going on? I have never had this much trouble before. Then again, I am fooling around too much, so I guess I can blame myself for, for that. <laughs> but man, I can't believe just how ridiculous the checkpoints could be in this game. Probably because I don't die a lot, so I didn't realize it until now. I might be a bit, uh, a bit perplexed and a bit angry, you might not tell. Okay, let's try and focus a little more this time. Because I've been making a lot of blunders as of late. And blunders, I mean, I've been dying a lot, which is something I don't usually do. Put down a couple of these mines while they focus on the Adeboid. Then I'll hyper strike you and you. I said you! Die! Thank you! Yeesh! I might be a bit stressed out more than usual today because, like I said, I don't usually die on Planet Rilgar. Or in any of these early levels for that matter. I've just been fooling around a lot as of late, that's why. So I got no one to, no one to blame on myself for that. You know what the worst thing is? As far as I know, we're only half done with this path. <laughs> And we died just about the halfway point, at least what I consider to be the halfway point. Because we can use this taxi to head downtown and continue along our way. So that's really sad for me. I call myself an experienced player on this game. I'm clearly not sure that right now. But let's try to brush up all that. As we can see, a huge, huge battle going on between the Amiibo boys and the Gat- Not the Gatatron vendor. Yes, the Gatatron vendor is an enemy too, in case you didn't know. Ganatron's actually conspiring against us. It tried to steal our money and probably our life too, because we already taken give them a lot of our cash. So why not? We're just a brainless consumer as far as they're concerned. Take out all of you. I'll just use the bog glove. I won't fool around with the Totter Bog Glove combo as much now. Because I think I demonstrated just how effective it could be. Although I can use that spy glove against that uh that tank. I wonder if it can eat close enough to it. Ah, uh, no it's not. But I could do that and lure to the uh, the tank. So I'll just put down a few more without getting too close. 
That should be enough. Get Totter away. Okay, maybe we're down the, down the mic love a bit, but I won't let those mines go to waste. I'm gonna use on these Exterma bots as well. By the way, that tech is actually called an Exterma tech too to fit with the these are the exterminators. The, they just didn't didn't register in my mind till now. Rhino for your robot. Trade you. Well, okay, Ratchet. I'm kidding. Sorry, he's not for sale. What's a rhino anyway? Rip you a new one. What did you just say to me? R Y N O. Rip you a new one. Why, that's the most powerful missile launcher in the galaxy. I know it's worth a lot of bolts. He must have stolen it from the Blarg. Stolen? Look, trash can. Did I say anything about it being hot? You better watch your mouth or I'll... Wait, don't tell me. Rip you a new one. Ah, oh, the Rhino. How much I want to say about the Rhino. But as you saw, it's a bit pricey. 150,000 bolts for the Rhino. We have got nowhere near that amount. I don't think we even got to a quarter of how many bolts that Rhino costs. But trust me, it will be more than worth it if you can gather enough bolts. But I'm going to say that till way later on because it's it's pretty good. I'll say that much, but it costs so much, my god. I'm not sure how many playthroughs you have to go through this game without having to spend anything in the Ganatron vendor just to make up that amount of bolts, but... I have to imagine it would be quite a lot, but I probably if I had to estimate 4 to 5 at best. I don't know. So that's something we'll have to keep in the back of our mind for a really long time. And unfortunately, that's going to be the end of today's episode. The reason why I'm doing this now is to save myself a little stress because as far as our path, or our, our, toward this last to where this path leads, that's what I'm trying to say. The worst is yet to come, and I think I want to prep myself a bit mentally before we head on to that little portion. So next time on Ratchet and Clank, we'll continue exploring Planet Real Guard to see if we can get to the hoverboard races and find what else may be lying in this world. Until we meet again everyone, farewell for now.